Clocks don't just tell you when you're due at a meeting or late to bed. Accurate timekeeping is useful everywhere, from pinpointing your precise location with GPS to synchronizing financial deals to the millisecond. Clocks have been around since the ancient Egyptians. They look very different today, but the principle is the same. They measure time using something that changes in a steady, predictable way. Three and a half thousand years ago, that was dripping water. In the 1920s, it was the oscillation of quartz crystals. And since the 1960s, it's been atoms. Atomic clocks get their tick from the frequency of waves of light. Not just any old light, but the light that prompts an electron to hop between energy levels around an atom. By locking a laser to the frequency of this light, physicists can measure a second to within 19 decimal places. That's so accurate that it would take 40 billion years to lose or gain a second. Super accurate clocks are especially useful for scientists. They can help make planet-sized telescopes, hunt for dark matter, or even monitor the shape of the planet from the air. That's why scientists want even more accurate clocks, as well as devices that are small and robust enough to take out into the field. For that, they're working on a nuclear clock. Instead of using electrons, they want to harness the nucleus itself and use its energy levels as a timekeeper. A nuclear clock should be super precise. And because nuclei are much less sensitive than electrons to disturbances like electromagnetic fields, it should also be much more robust. But making a nuclear clock has been a struggle. Physicists suspected for a long time that a radioactive isotope called thorium-229 might make a good clock. Its nucleus is extremely unusual in that the energy it takes to boost it to an excited state is relatively tiny, small enough to just about be reachable with a tabletop laser. But no one knew at precisely what energy that shift happens and therefore what frequency of laser they'd need to get the clock ticking. Figuring that out took decades. In the end, scientists had to trap trillions of thorium-229 atoms in a crystal and then zap that crystal with thousands of frequencies of laser light at once, using something called a frequency comb. This allowed them to figure out which precise frequency triggered the transition. They've calculated the tick frequency to an incredible 13 decimal places. Not quite as good as the best optical atomic clocks, but not bad for a prototype. And knowing the precise transition energy opens up lots of opportunities for more research. Theorists can use the value to check the understanding of the nucleus itself. The shape of the nucleus, for example, impacts how much energy it takes to shift states. And physicists are already using the tick frequency to look for dark matter, the undetectable substance that we think makes up 85% of the universe's mass. Some kinds of dark matter would make the forces of nature subtly change in strength, which would then wobble the frequency at which a nuclear clock ticks. Nuclear clocks have the potential to outperform atomic clocks, but that will take a lot of work. In fact, what's been made so far isn't even a clock because, well, the frequency isn't being used to measure time. But all the ingredients, the cogs and gears, are very much in place and an exciting new field is kicking off.